I thought defensively, you know, we did some pretty good things. I liked our activity. Uh, we had a couple times where we really uh, had great possessions. The guys were talking, and, and our adjustments were really good. Our rotations were really good. Uh, got a little careless down the stretch, gave up some transition baskets, but uh, for the most part, our defense is pretty good. Uh, offensively, uh, ball movement is just not there, and uh, you know our turnovers are really a problem for us. So, got a lot of work to do this week to uh, to try to get the ball moving and uh, try to get guys making plays. Do you have an update on Arsenal? You know, I think he's okay. He was in the the locker room there. I didn't have a chance to to talk to him too much, but. Uh, Looked okay, you know. I mean, he was walking. He looked fine. Did so. he hit his head on the floor? Or was it in the play? So uh, they they said that uh, uh, Carlos caught him with an elbow, you know, when they came together there. So I, I didn't see what happened, uh, but I, I think he caught an elbow from somebody. You changed anything from practice routine? Uh, the way you approach the opening Pac-12 game? Well, we've got, you know. Uh, a real important week here for us. Uh, you know, I thought we had gotten some things worked out with our ball movement, but uh, obviously we didn't. And, and so, uh, you know, I like our effort defensively. Uh, Tony with the blocks and changing a lot of shots inside, I thought I did some good things. Uh, uh, you know, so I thought for a long time there we were, you know, defensively pretty sharp, but you turn the ball over 20 times, you know, and they they got 20 of their points, 20 of their 43 points off of our turnovers, you know, and uh, a lot of them led to layups. So, obviously, our ball handling's got to improve, and, and our ball movement uh, has got to get so much better. You talk about Carlos, and I think he played a, the most minutes for you guys tonight. Just the ability to have that guy on the bench in the first half, and then be able to insert him as a starter in the second half when you need. Well, I, you know, Carlos, uh, when, when he's really focused, he's really good, you know, and uh, he's had a good week of practice, uh, and, and I think that led to a, a good performance tonight. Uh, he hit a big three when they had cut the lead down to six or seven points there. You know, he hit the big three and uh, looked really good. Balance was really good shooting it. So uh, we ran the out-of-bounds play there for him, trying to get him a look, and uh, I mean, I didn't think it opened up that much, but he got a good look at it and, and knocked it down. So, uh, you know, I just think he had a good week of practice, and it, and it led to a good performance today. Coach, did you notice a difference in the second half when Nevada made a little comeback there? Did you notice a difference in the team without Arsenal on the floor? Did they, were they well, I, you know, we just we had some bad turnovers. You know, we had a couple really good looks we just missed. Uh, you know, I thought our ball movement was a little better in the second half, but uh, we got a couple good looks there. We missed a couple open threes. I remember Johnny had a wide open one on top and missed. And you know, they got a few transition baskets. But uh, uh, you know, Arsenal's a good rebounder and, and and a good defender. And you know, we need the depth. You know, we played some guys there the second half. Uh, I felt like we had a unit out there that had a pretty good feel against the zone, and the pace of the game wasn't too much. So we just we stayed with them. You had, uh, you had Lloyd and Artis together for an extended period of time in that group. Was I was that, trying to cut down turnovers. Yeah. You know, I just I'd say, well, we just got to put our best ball handlers on the floor, and and uh, you know try to cut down the turnovers. And EJ, you know, I think he's just trying too hard. He's uh, you know trying to make plays sometimes. I think he's just trying too hard. And uh, but I just for a while there, I just I'm tired of the turnovers and just say, well, we'll put our best ball handlers and. And uh, you know, hope that they don't turn it over. So, is that a lineup you see the team coming back to later in the year? We're going to play a lot of different lineups. You know, this team's uh, going to go through some ups and downs. We don't have the consistency that I hope for. You know, on January one. So, you know, I anticipate giving a lot of guys opportunities yet. Uh, those will be earned in practice, but uh, we will look at different guys. We we don't have our rotation set. There's. There's another, nothing locked in stone yet. We, we have not shown the consistency that I think we should. Do you feel like your team's ready for the atmosphere for the Civil War next week? And well, you know, the guys have handled atmospheres pretty good. You know, uh, we didn't play real well at UTEP. I thought against uh, Vegas, we you know, it was a great atmosphere, guys, you know. So, uh, you know, it'll be a good atmosphere. It always is when we go down there. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're winning ball games. So, uh, It'll be a, it'll be a tough game Sunday, no doubt. 
How about the jump into Pac-12 play, particularly with the Civil War? Um, yeah, I, you know, I wish we had uh, <laughs> uh, our breaks later. You know, uh, when you when you have your break the first week, uh, kind of gives you a funny rotation. But uh, uh, that's the way it is, and uh, you know, we, we got a tough start to conference. Got to go to Oregon State, and we we come back and play the number three team in the country, and and uh, Arizona State's off to a great start. So. We've got it pretty tough, and then we got to go to UCLA, who's playing better, and, and USC. So uh, we've got a very difficult start to the season, conference-wise, and uh, we're going to have to have a good week of practice and get ready for it. How do you feel about the team's ability to respond, both you know coming out of the half and to the run that Nevada made? Was that kind of well? I, you know, I really liked the way we started the second half. Just made three really good plays for each other. Uh, D.A. drove the baseline and gave it to, to Dot for a layup. And the next time, Tony got it on the baseline and kicked it out the weak side, and Carlos hit a three. And and then uh, on the fast break, Carlos blocks the shot and brings it and kicks it to, to Dot for another layup. So we, we started the half with three really good plays, you know, uh, three assisted baskets. And, uh, uh, you know, so that was something. You know, we, we, we scored 17 baskets is all, but we have 14 of them assisted today, you know. So... When we made plays for each other, we got good shots. What with the turnovers, do you think it's just guys looking for guys? And no, they're, they're, guys. they're making up their mind what they want to do. They're not making simple plays. They're like, they're all trying to get on Sports Center and the news and everything. They just, they're trying to make way too difficult plays. They just, they in their mind, they go, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And whether the defense dictates that or not, that's what they're trying to do. You know, and... Uh, I'm going to drive it here and shoot it. And if three guys come, I'm still going to shoot it. You know, we're just not making the decisions of slowing down and saying, okay, defense is coming. I got to kick it this time. Guy's wide open. I'm going to give it up. You know, we're just, we're not making good decisions. We're not making simple plays. We're, we're making the game much more difficult than it has to be on the offensive end. Any more questions? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tom. EJ, you guys have talked a lot about wanting to cut down on the turnovers. Obviously, that first half probably. Can you just talk about what, what was kind of the mindset at the start of the game and kind of what happened with like a real sluggish start? Because yeah, yeah, uh, we have been really trying to limit our turnovers, and I mean most of them, I it was on me. So I got to clean it up a lot. Being a senior, got to be strong with the ball and make better plays. So. Um, yeah, most of them on me, so I, I got to take a lot of blame for that. In the second half, you guys were missing Arsalan a little bit. Do you guys notice a difference without him on the court? Seems like Nevada made a little bit of a comeback there. But. Yeah, I noticed. I got to get some rebounds for a change, so <laughs> I definitely noticed. Did you guys get an update on what's his condition? No. Nope. He's fine, though. He was in the locker room, so I think he, he's going to be okay. Yeah, it's pretty impressive with, you know, two really, you know, efficient scores in Burton and Story. So um, I, I thought we played one of our better defensive games, um, you know, point-wise. But we, we still got a lot of improvement to do, um, especially on the offensive side. But, um, you know, uh, we're, we're coming together slowly, and uh, um, we're going to need to k pick it up once uh, Pac-12 starts. Tony, what turned it around for you guys in the first half? It seemed like you had a nice run at the end of the half, but in the half time, you kind of kept that going at the start of the second as well. Um, in the first half, defense was big for us. Uh, we came out and uh, contained those guys. We knew that they had just came off some big games, so our, uh, our game plan was to contain them as much as we could, and uh, we were successful with that. You guys came out on an 11-2 run to open the second half. I mean, what uh, is it just – Adjustments, or the coach kind of let it fire you guys. What was the difference between the second and first half? There? I think we just made plays for each other. Um, there wasn't really any thing we changed. Um, just making plays for each other. We knew we could do it. Um, we we knew that the drive kick was there, and um, I thought we just we just made plays for each other, and that was the biggest difference. What you guys want to talk about? You feel like you're you're ready for that now, and that. How much of a difference is it going in Pac-12 as opposed to playing non-conference? I mean, did you change your mindset at all for that or not? Um, can you ask that again? 
So just your mindset going into Pac-12, do you feel you're, like you're ready for conference play, and then how much of a change is it for you to mentally prepare for a Pac-12 team as opposed to a non-conference team? Um, I, I feel like we've been preparing well for conference play, um, and it's definitely a different mentality that uh, a lot of our younger guys will see once league play starts. Um, but it's definitely a different mentality, and uh, I, I do feel we're pretty well prepared. Talking about different mentality, how about starting it off with the Civil War? Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, a lot of people in the community, that's one that everybody can kind of get up for. It's robbery for us, so that'll be big for us next week. You guys notice a difference in the fans once football season's over? Uh, I think we get a little bit more once yeah. the season's over, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely a better atmosphere. And it's Pac-12, tw- it's Pac-12 yeah. too, so. Yeah, it's, nobody it's wants different... to see Idaho State. <laughs> <laughs> EJ, how about for you going back to Corvallis, uh, playing there for your last time? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, probably emotional about it, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a big game. Uh, they're really good at home, and we, we're going to need to bring our best game to win there, so. Any more questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you.